This is a sketchbook that I've made and I'm working on for um, a, a voluntary project that I've joined in. Um, through a friend of a friend, I've been put in touch with an art therapist um, called Juliet Lockhart, and she runs a project called Art in Mind. Um, she's just won a um, Suffolk Adult Learners Award um, for health and well-being um, f from, for, the, for this project. Um, but she works with groups with um, people with mental health um, problems, but she's not an art therapist. She just runs it as an art project so that they go away and they have a good morning doing art as a, a distraction and a recovery and a healing thing rather than um, being therapy. She doesn't try to do anything in the way of therapy at all. Um, she's running a series of courses and I'm helping her with the one at Moises Hall in Bury St Edmunds. Um, so I've been to four of those, partly as a participant, partly as an extra pair of hands, um, just to see what, what she does. Um, so her leaflet is there. And um, the first week we, we made sketchbooks. So um, it's an A4 sketchbook and we used um, A A3 folded paper and she showed us how to punch holes and to stitch the sketchbook as well. Um, and I've made a pocket on the back of mine that I can put um, pieces in to keep, keep them safe. So that was the sketchbook. Um, the first week um, we were looking at colours and um, colour wheels. Um, and because I'd already done that, um, she gave me an exercise to do where there, um, there were cards with um, colour samples on them and it was about matching the colours from the um, acrylic paints that we had. So we just had three basic colours um, and, I, and I made all of those. So that, that was um, a nice exercise. Um, so that was after we'd made the sketchbooks. And then we just went, um, used up all the paint that was left. Um, and... Um, yeah, faded those. So that was that was the first week. Um, the second week, um, the whole project is about portraits. Um, so Juliet had examples of portraits, and and uh, we we looked at all of those different different portraits by different people, um, thinking about what sort of persona they were displaying. Um, whether people were looking out of the picture or whether they were thinking about you looking in at them, what they were trying to say about um, themselves and their mood. Um, and I made notes of all the um, drawings that, that she'd got. Um, and then we did um, an exercise with um, cutting out pictures from magazines and like a sort of um, consequences type thing. So we each had eyes, nose, mouth and um, a head with hair and we, you'd stick one bit on and then pass it on to the next person so that the, the pictures kept circulating. So although we were making collage faces, nobody knew what they were going to come out like. Um, and then we used those um, um, to practice drawing portraits. And um, uh, that was the collage picture that I had. So um, again, may there was there were some really nice ones. I wasn't overly impressed with the one I got, but that's um, I thought as a, as an idea they were great because um, some of them came out f um, fantastic. And uh, that's not good grammar, is it? Never mind. Um, yes. Yeah, so then we then we did um, different drawing techniques um, using um, white pastel and ink. So resist um, continuous line. Um, drawing with the hand that we didn't favour and then drawing upside down with two crayons taped together and finally a drawing with um, two coloured wax crayons and then putting ink over the top again drawing upside down um, which were all techniques that I knew about but um, it was really useful to be reminded so we did those using the collage pictures we've made and then we um, worked on a self-portrait, looking at an image of ourselves, um, using the same techniques with the pastel and the ink. Um, I was pleased with these. This was the um, continuous line drawing, and this was the 
um, continuous line um, with my non-dominant hand, so drawing with my left hand. Um, but it was really good at just making you look and following what you were seeing. So, um, although I hope it doesn't look anything like me, um, I felt it was a, a good, honest drawing. And then these were the drawings of myself upside down. Um, and again with wax crayons and ink. And if I turn them around, um, that's probably one of the best drawings of myself I've done. And I've been, I've been trying, trying to do pictures of myself, and and really struggling. And they weren't, they weren't coming out looking anything like visually accurate. So drawing upside down was was a useful reminder. Um, and I, Again, it's it's to do with looking and drawing what you see instead of what you think you're aiming at. So, um, yeah, that was good exercises. And as a result of, of that, I came home and I made this sheet um, just as a kind of checklist for getting started um, exploring ideas. So the idea is continuous lines and drawing upside down, drawing with the other hand using your fingers, using masks, using pencils tied together, developing boxes, collage, all sorts of things. So all the ideas I could think of. So when I come to a new idea, um, the idea is about exploring it in all these different ways before you actually start trying to get anything else out of it. So just like I say, a checklist for myself of ideas to use. Um, and then the next week uh oh we were you know, looking at objects in self portraits so again um Juliet had examples of different pieces of art um where objects have been used to um enhance the picture and i've i've been pleased with these um summaries because they were obviously new you discover new artists all the time so it was really useful to get her perspective and see what she'd chosen um, but I was also, it helped my confidence. I did know a lot of the artists that she'd chosen and I knew about them. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, built my confidence up that the things I'm doing are, are right and I'm looking at, 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 at good things that are, are useful and supportive. Um, and then we, um, because we were, this workshop takes place in the museum, we were um, dispatched to go and find an object in the museum to draw and um, we had a, a checklist of things like what was the object, why did you choose it, have you seen anything like it before, what does it make you think of the colours, what questions would you ask it, shapes, those sorts of things. Um, there were some lovely things in the museum, I shall go back and draw there again. Um, haven't been there for a long time so it was a good reminder of what's there and there were several objects that I would have chosen um, but the one that actually made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up was this cabinet that was displaying um, an army issue uniform and I've seen my photos of my dad wearing this lot when he was doing his national service and um, I, I was really moved by this um, the, this drawing was done from memory because we had to look at it and then turn turn around and draw it um, and all, all the pencil sketches is what I drew, and the biro lines are just where I, when I turned back to look at it, um, just to, um, yeah, to correct a few things. Um, the only thing I'd left out completely was this shirt, which I knew there was something in that gap, but I couldn't think what it was. But, um, oh no, no, I did that. No, it was the gloves, that's right, it was the gloves that I'd left out. Um, so, yeah, I was quite pleased that I'd, I'd managed to remember everything. Um, and they'd also got a model soldier sort of wearing it and um, I was really touched by his hands and again looked a bit like my dad's hands um, yeah when I touched them they were cold so that was that was a bit spooky but then that's how he is now so um, but yeah I, I felt this uniform was something that sort of matched fear and comfort all at once that you didn't want to have to wear the uniform at all it wasn't it was something you would really rather not do if you could possibly help it but being in that situation it was then actually really comforting to have 
protective uniform and something that um, could be relied on to look after you and, and be um, a protection between you and the elements. So it was about um, being frightened and being comforted. Um, and I also, it was also about identity as well, because I know that the doing his national service was a really big growing time for my dad and he had to face things that he would really rather not and um, he went into mental health corps and that, that was formative in the people that he met and the work that he did and he went, he went into teaching and eventually became a minister and all that was for those years doing his national service were formative in those things that happened to him in later life. So there's also a paradox between being given a uniform and being made to look exactly like everybody else and having your identity taken away where obedience was the word and if the you know powers that be said jump, you jumped. So while he was in that state of being classified as somebody just like everybody else, his own spirit and thoughts couldn't be taken away from him and it was a huge time of personal growth and development and the experiences I've had in the last th three to five years you know it's just well more than that eight years it's just gone on and on and on and it's been one thing after another to deal with but now I'm beginning to come through it and feeling that that's again it, these have been important years in my own growth and development so really interesting um, about self-portraits. Um, this week, with um, and for the next the three weeks, we're um, going to be turning them into um, portraits. So the idea is to have a polystyrene head that you turn into a portrait of yourself and to do a small painting based on the object that you've drawn, but to bring the aspect of yourself that you display in the head comes from the object that um, that you've drawn. So that's the project for the next three weeks. I shall be there tomorrow, but unfortunately we're then going on holiday, so I'm going to miss the last two weeks, but I'm hoping to bring my head home um, and to be able to carry on working with it. Um, and the other notes I've got here are, um, we looked a bit about hidden and symbolic meanings and sort of things that were included in paintings and, and what they meant. But again, you know, it's painting, it's subjective, you can pretty much make things mean whatever you want them to.